you know, you, you, you got a song on this record that um, puts your personal life right out there. Uh-huh, oh, this you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you have a very complicated relationship with this girl in your life. Yeah, well, well there's this girl that's uh, really important to me, and, and uh, the, you know, the Love Is Just a Lie song. Um, if I was completely, like, if I wasn't talking to her anymore, and if we were done, and it was like, it'd be easy to talk about it, but, uh, you know, even though, like, I still have a lot of feelings for her, so, like, pretty strong feelings, so it's kind of, that's why it's a little awkward to talk about it, but it's cool. <laughs> Breakup songs are better than love songs, so I wondered if, if what makes you sad in your life, like in this relationship, is ultimately better for your art. I think it definitely brought a lot of inspiration. But with this song, it was exactly as I was living it, so I, I guess maybe it, it came off as more genuine or more emotional or more powerful or more in your face or whatever. You have to call her and say... Well, I play it to her. Can you play it to her? Uh-huh. What'd you say? Um, well, she's like, she didn't say, like, damn, <laughs> okay, that's kind of heavy. Uh, is this thing going to radio everywhere? <laughs> I remember like a year and a half ago, we sat uh, in Italy. Milan, I believe. In a little cafe. We had lunch together. We were sipping on some uh, tea handy. <laughs> we started talking about, you know, taking a new direction. We didn't even really have to talk about it, you know? It's almost like it just happened. We were excited about it. You know, it, it sounded like a great idea. But we didn't know precisely where to take it, what to do to change it up. I think it was mainly the importance of making something different, making something that, you know, like we've had two pretty successful records. We have to find our own way, our own path. You know, we have to find something that will define who we are today, you know? Yeah, we're gonna park with Dan. We have a keyboard. We always think that to find that the last detail of the song that we're trying to fix. So, uh, you're actually with the thing. Create a process. We, we started to, to blend a couple of sounds together and try to create a somewhat of a of a new 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 sound for Simple Plan. So everything's going well. Dave Foreman is a great guy. And right there, there he is right now. Wait, he's anxious to be leaving. Yeah. I, I think uh, I think uh, Fortman had a big role in it. You know, he he was able to mix um, some you know organic sounds and electronic sound really good and. He totally got it, you know, he got it right away. He knew what we wanted to do. We're thinking maybe it could be a great thing to put in um, a part with, uh, like, a hip-hop part. We're artists, we write our own music, we do everything ourselves, but it's, it's sometimes, as a band, there's nothing better. Like, give yourself that, that opportunity to experiment, you know? I always loved hip-hop, and I always loved that culture, and, and but I know, you know, I'm a five-foot-nine white dude. So I'm not scaring anybody and I'm not 50 cents, you know what I mean? But I have like a, uh, you know, I just, I look at them and I think, I think they're the most, right now in the music, music scene, I feel they're the most ambitious, most driven, and they're the ones who are taking chances. Danger, you know. I mean, we went to uh, we went straight to the source. He's the uh, Timberland uh, right hand man. He's now off doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. He's been doing R and B, soul, hip hop, all all that kind of stuff. He was very enthusiastic about working with us, and, and so were we. This is our secret weapon. You don't know about him yet, but this is the reason why this record is so cool and different and hot. When we started writing with his loops and writing with his sounds and his riffs and all that, that's when we're like, oh my God, this is, you know, this is what we need to do right now. This is fresh, it's different, you know, it's, it's got some good groove to it. We need to pursue this. I first heard it and I thought, okay, this is a statement. 
Yeah, it's kind of it was kind of like that. Really, w working with him kind of showed us that we could do whatever we wanted to, and we could still pull it off. You know, when we came back from that first session, we had some songs that were absolutely different, and we knew like, wow, this doesn't sound stupid, it sounds good. So obviously, we're able to do different things. Let's not be afraid to to throw ourselves in different directions and think that we can only pull off, you know, uh, a G to a D to a whatever. Yeah. Not a good record. Band, like on top, we don't want to be the band that slowly declines and becomes obsolete and kind of. So you don't want the loudest cheers to cause it to be for your first single ever, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, our fans grow with us. Um, you know how it is. Like, you put out the same record, they hate it. It's the same record. Put out a different record, they hate it. It doesn't sound like you anymore. You know, uh, so it's, 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 it's always that fine line of, of keeping your fans happy and making new fans also. You wound up left for dead. You know, we have that confidence that we, you know, we, we've done it before. We, you know, we've... People know us, we have some fans, we have a, a very good, loyal fan base, and I think we do have that confidence. And even with this album, if, if we came out with a record that was sounding like the last record, I probably would have less confidence.